Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Reverend Insanity, written by Gu Zhen Ran, audio by Dex San Wu Li. Chapter 240, Arm Wrestling. Chapter 240, Arm Wrestling. Translator, Chibi General Editor, Chibi General. Bandit monkeys were very strong and were as big as an elephant. Mature, bandit monkey could reach 10 meters of height and had bulging muscles all over their body. Their arms were over two times thicker than their legs and their tails were like iron rods, capable of pulverizing rocks. The fur of bandit monkeys were golden with black tiger stripes covering their body. What was peculiar was the fur from their waist grew out, naturally to cover the crotch and the butt area, just like a leather skirt. Howl, the monkey king of this bandit monkey group, suddenly opened its large mouth and gave a loud howl. Its howl were as forceful as lions and tigers. Ho! The monkey king's howl was answered by the other monkeys. The howls created sound waves which engulfed the surroundings, scattering the winds and clouds along with the dense white fog. Within seconds, everyone's sights broadened and only then did they realize. Both sides of the passageway were filled with bandit monkeys, over a thousand bandit monkeys had surrounded the caravan. They were enormous, the same size as the trees. Some young trees could only reach up to their waists. In front of the caravan was the monkey king who had an even larger physique, and was boldly sitting on a stone bench. A gray stone wine jar, that was as big as a water tank, was lying on its side, giving off a dense fragrance of alcohol. The monkey king stopped after howling once, but the other bandit monkeys were still howling without stop. This instead enhanced the monkey king's majesty. Its eyes were sharp and bright, its gaze tranquil as it sat there without moving. In contrast, those ordinary bandit monkeys were getting restless as they stared at the caravan's goods, itching to have a go. Wild beasts like monkey, fox and wolves possessed intelligence. This bandit monkey king's intelligence might only be equal to three year. Old child and wasn't at the level of cunning lightning wolf, but it was enough for it communicate. The leader of the caravan, Jia Long, narrowed his eyes at the monkey king and suddenly said, Jia Yong, go. Yes, chief. Jia Yong stood up. He was tall and fat, especially with his bulging stomach, but he was actually rather robust. He was defensive GU master and his lifebound GU was water armor GU. He was a rank 2 GU master and was specialized in fighting in water. Once. When he was swimming in a river, he luckily encountered a boat-sized tortoise and killed it, obtaining a tortoise strength GU from its body. After he used it, he was able to permanently gain the strength of a tortoise. The monkey groups howled even more fiercely when they saw Jia Yong. Coming closer, their voices shaking the whole forest. Jia Yong had a solemn expression as he lifted his sleeves and stood in front of the monkey king. The monkey king was enormous and even while sitting, it was still taller than Jia Yong by a head. It looked at Jia Yong and howled, several bandit monkeys immediately brought a stone table while panting hard. The stone table was as large as a bed and was extremely heavy, producing a muffled sound as it landed on the ground. Another two bandit monkeys came over and moved a stone stool, placing it in front of the monkey king. The monkey king slammed at the stone table, the sounds produced was as if he had beaten a large drum. Jia Yong gulped a mouthful of saliva and sat down. He placed his right elbow on the table and extended his forearm. The monkey king similarly extended his left hand, two palms tightly grasped each other. Beside the table was an elderly female bandit monkey who suddenly shouted. Jia Yong and the monkey king heard the signal and immediately put strength in their arms, starting this uncommon style of strength contest. Bandit monkeys respected strength and arm wrestling was their main social activity. Young monkeys could arm wrestle immediately after being born. Arm wrestling was not only a game for bandit monkeys, it was also commonly used method to resolve disputes. In the past, the righteous GU master Sky Crown Marquis was only a rank. 5 GU Master, he naturally wasn't able to slaughter the mountain with this strength. It was this arm wrestling custom of the bandit monkeys he used to reach the peak of the bandit monkey mountain and win against the monkey emperor. 
he was then able to obtain the monkey group's approval and came to an agreement, opening the trade route. From then on, any caravans that were passing through Fehu Mountain would follow this agreement and arm wrestle with the bandit monkeys. If they won, they would obtain the bandit monkey's approval and be able to pass without paying the toll. If they lost, they would have to let the monkey group take a portion of their goods. With this, the caravans could carry out their business and the bandit. Monkeys were also happy to be able to get benefits. As the years went by and the caravans abided by the agreement, the trade route began to gradually flourish, and the agreement also gradually stabilized. Jia Yang, sitting opposite the monkey king, was flushed red, his expression was twisted as he was already using all his strength. However, he still couldn't resist the monkey king's strength, and his arm began to gradually incline to the side until finally the monkey king's arm slammed Jia Yang's arm to the table. Victory! Monkey king stood up and excitedly beat his chest with his fists. The rest of the monkeys were howling and screeching, the noise was frightening. Jia Yang walked back to the caravan with his head lowered. The bandit Monkeys teased and taunted him while he was walking back, some lifted their leather skirt, showing their butts at Jia Yong, some made faces, and some shook their fingers at him. To think there would be a day where I am ridiculed by a bunch of beasts, Jia Yong gave a helpless sigh with a bitter smile on his face. Jia Long showed no expression, and just raised his hand. Jia Clan's troops began to move forward, the monkeys flocked towards them and began to wantonly take goods from the wagons. Jia clan had already made careful considerations, they covered the high quality coal stones with a layer of colorful and gorgeous silk and thin fabric. The monkeys were all attracted by these colorful cloth, and let go of the more valuable ash gray high quality coal stones. The monkeys were very happy with their choices, playing around with the cloths. Many wrapped the cloth around their arms, waists and even draped the cloth over their shoulders, the whole scene was noisy and chaotic. Where is Jia Ping? Jia Long shouted with a heavy voice. Jia Ping slowly walked out, his body was starkly in contrast to Jia Yong, he was thin as stick and looked extremely fragile. I will avenge you. He patted Jia Yong's shoulder as he walked past him. This will naturally be easily over with brother Jia Ping making a move. Jia Yong cupped his hands and gave a forced smile. Jia clansmen let out a breath of relief upon seeing Jia Ping moving out, their expressions clearly easing up. The bandit monkeys let out odd yells when they saw Jia Ping's physique. Their gazes filled with contempt and disdain. Monkey King was already sitting down, he indifferently lifted the wine jar and drank a mouthful of monkey wine. They are indeed animals, judging people by appearances. Jia Long sneered. Jia Ping looked weak, but actually possessed strength of two bears. It was just that he used tendon coiling GU which intertwined his whole muscles and tendons just like tree roots, and thus compressing his muscles. Jia Ping sat down and stretched his arm. His arm wasn't even a quarter of the Monkey King's arm. However, after they started, the deadlock only lasted a moment before the Monkey King was defeated. Instantly, the howls and screeches of the monkeys stopped. The monkey king's eyes were opened as wide as saucers, revealing an incredulous expression. Jia Long chuckled and waved his hand, signaling the troop to continue moving. The monkeys that were blocking the path automatically made away and didn't make any moves. When a portion of Jia clan's troops moved forward, the monkeys howled and again blocked the path. The Monkey King wasn't convinced in its loss as it slammed the stone table and challenged Jia Ping. Jia Ping had a smile on his face as he gained another victory. Everyone, I am going to move first. Jia Long cupped his hands and after, calling out to the others, the Jia clan's troops and wagons passed through the checkpoint. All right, next it is my Lin clan's turn. Lin Dong, Lin clan's vice leader, shouted. The others didn't argue, they had already discussed the order of the caravan. Time continued to pass and parts of the caravan had also moved forward. To pass through the Fehu mountain and decrease the losses to the minimum, all the great clans nurtured a lot of specific GU masters. Ox strength, tiger strength, elephant strength, python strength, horse 
strength, the GU masters possessing these went to compete, each showing their talents, some lost and some won. Most of the people had passed through the checkpoint. Finally, it was Zhang Clan's turn. Zhang Zhu didn't look good, he was a healing GU master and wasn't good at strength aspect. Moreover, when arm wrestling with the Monkey King, one could only use their strength and not the GU worms. If they were discovered to have cheated by using GU worms, they would be attacked and killed by the monkey groups. The troops Zhang clan brought in this caravan didn't have any other GU masters except him, a rank 3 GU master. Thus, they were the weakest in strength in the whole caravan. Shang Xinxi did not have an easy life in Zhang clan and was shunted. Aside for being an illegitimate child, the situation had become worse after her mother died of illness. In light of her mother's will, Shang Xinxi sold the family assets and organized this caravan. Most of Zhang clan's people looked forward to this disgrace of the clan dying outside. Thus, they didn't send any GU masters to reinforce her. Uncle Zhang Zhu doesn't need to worry too much, they are nothing more than goods, it is okay as long as people are safe. Shang Xinxi had a delicate heart, she softly consoled Zhang Zhu when she noticed his expression. The only one remaining is Zhang Clan. Tisk, tisk no need to watch, they are sure to lose. I am quite familiar with that Zhang Zhu. It is said that Zhang Clan's girl organized this merchant group by herself. Hence, there is only Zhang Zhu to put up a front. Many GU masters stood behind the checkpoint, waiting to see a good show. They had all, more or less, lost some goods, their mood were naturally not too good. Comparison produces happiness, the unlucky people often felt relieved by seeing a more unlucky person. Many were looking at Zhang clan, trying to find comfort in their hearts. Goods can be lost, only lives are truly important. Uncle Zhang Zhu, you don't need to go, we will just let these monkey groups take the goods. Shang Xinxi said, Sai, miss, you don't know. We can't pass through without competing. These monkeys are very obstinate, we must arm wrestle. Miss, we can lose. But we can't let others belittle us. I will go. Zhang Zhu cupped his hands and forced himself to walk out. Wait, wait. Right at this time, Fang Yuan walked out of the crowd. Miss Zhang, you are my benefactor. Let me be the one to go. He cupped his hands and said to Shang Xinxi, You, the servant girl Xiao Dai rolled her eyes, you are not a GU master. Don't add trouble at this time of crisis. Shang Xinxi smiled, Hey Tu, I have received your intention. This isn't a joke, the monkey king has great strength, didn't you see some of those GU? Master's arms fractured. Miss, even if my arms fracture, I will repay you. Fang Yuan persevered. You, how can you be like this, not knowing your limitations? If your arm gets fractured, wouldn't it be my missy who has to waste time healing? You, Xiao Dai waved her hand in disgust, don't stir trouble. Lady Zhang, you don't know, I have always had extraordinary strength. Since young, even adults didn't have as much strength as me when I was a kid. I must go this time. Fang Yuan then turned and walked towards the Monkey King. Hey Tu. Shang Xinxi wanted to stop him, but was stopped by Zhang. Zhu. Miss, he is not a moron, he definitely has some confidence. Sometimes, we need to believe in others. Zhang Zhu persuaded. In fact, he had no faith in Fang Yuan. He only thought this would teach a good lesson to these mortals who had brought him trouble. A, look, Zhang clan actually sent out a servant. Ha ha, Zhang clan has no people left, they are sending out a servant to lose. Face, Fang Yuan's figure soon attracted the attention of the others. Chapter 241, Huang Jin Mountain. Chapter 241, Huang Jin Mountain. Translator, Chibi General Editor, Chibi General. It is him, he he, heaven has opened its eyes. Brother Chang and his groups. Gazes turned bright with excitement upon Fang Yuan's figure. I can't wait to see his arm break. Lady Zhang is kind, he wasn't put to execution even after offending the Zhang clan. It turns out they were waiting to send him here. Fang Yuan walked slowly towards the stone table and directly sat down. 
The monkey king gazed at him, then stretched its arm. The two sides clasped their palms together and began the contest under countless gazes. The monkey king exerted its strength, but Fang Yuan's arm was like it was made from steel and didn't budge even a little. The monkey king's pupils shrunk, revealing a hint of astonishment, this was the strongest human it had met in its life. Fang Yuan inwardly laughed, I could defeat this monkey king even when I only possessed strength of two boars, let alone now when my strength has increased by half of a crocodile's strength. The monkey king had already gone through many rounds before and it was already lacking in strength now. One could say, this situation was of an absolute victory to Fang Yuan. This monkey king doesn't have enormous strength. Before, those G.U. Masters who possessed strength of a bear or strength of a horse had ended. Up losing to it, it wasn't because their strength was inferior to the monkey. Kings, but rather because they couldn't bring out all their strength in arm. Wrestling. In fact, all strength type G.U. like bear strength, horse strength, rabbit. Strength, fish strength, tortoise strength, crocodile strength, were different. This difference wasn't only in the amount of their strength, but was more on their fields of expertise. Bear strength for smacking, horse strength for galloping, rabbit strength for jumping, tortoise strength for endurance, crocodile strength for biting. They each had their own fields of expertise. In other words, in certain situations, some types of powers could be utilized to their maximum effects. As for arm wrestling, it focused on the strength of arms. The bandit monkeys were experts regarding this. One could tell just from looking at their physique, with their upper limbs being over two time thicker than their lower limbs. They could arm wrestle from their birth, possessing the foundation of strength training. If the arm wrestling was changed to another form of contest, many of the Defeated GU masters might be able to win against the bandit monkey king. From this, one could derive that every power possessed their own unique points, and they couldn't simply be differentiated by looking at the amount of their strength. Take humans for example, a punch would definitely be weaker than a kick. Under normal condition, a person cannot use all their strength. I have strength of two boars, half of a crocodile's strength and my own strength but it is impossible for my arm wrestling strength to match theirs. Of course, concentrating all of one's strength in one movement is not impossible. One would need that legendary G.U. worm. Fang Yuan couldn't display his true strength in arm wrestling, but he was someone with very deep foundations and could guarantee his victory. However, he couldn't make it blatantly obvious. Hence, he intentionally Revealed a strained expression, his arms shaking as he maintained the deadlock with the Monkey King. Slowly, his arm pushed down on Monkey King's. When the contest ended, almost everyone was stumped. He actually won. This guy has innate divine strength. The human groups were in an uproar, their surprised gasp spreading to others. Inquire about this guy. We need to immediately recruit him if possible. The heads of main clans felt a rush of excitement. Compared to the GU masters who they could only nurture after investing large amounts of funds, Fang Yuan's quality to price ratio was much higher. They could use him without any investment, and bring in profits for their caravan. Zhang clan's luck is good, picking up such a treasure. Instantly, many GU masters gazes towards the Zhang clan contained some envy. No wonder we couldn't beat him. Brother Chang and his group were speechless. This is a monster. Now that I think of it, I am really lucky to not have been beaten to death by him. As this group of servants thought back, they were immediately filled with after fear. They had previously still been looking to take revenge against Fang Yuan. But now looking at this sight, all their hopes of revenge were gone. On the contrary, they became worried that Fang Yuan would look for trouble for them in future. Chen clan's old steward's expression looked ugly. To think this idiot actually had such brute strength. What bad luck, now. If only the vice leader doesn't blame me, he cautiously glanced at the Klen clan's vice leader. Chen clan's vice leader was frowning, he was thinking of much more. He started to doubt Zhang clan's intention. Was demanding for those two a trap. Did they see this servant's worth and intentionally kept him, then? 
came to demand for them. The more he thought, the more reasonable he felt his thoughts were, he couldn't help snorting coldly. Anyone who felt he was played with and cheated, wouldn't have a good mood. But the mistake was already done, he could only pinch his nose and endure. This bad luck. Am I seeing things? The servant girl Xiao Dai covered her mouth, she was speechless at this result. Worry disappeared from Shang Xin Si's face, and was replaced by a smile. Let's go. Zhang Zhu waved at the troops to move ahead with a complex. Look on his eyes. Fang Yuan Wan, allowing Zhang Clan's caravan to pass through this. Checkpoint. Fang Yuan won two rounds straight, the Zhang Clan's caravan were able to pass through most of the path. At the third round, Fang Yuan intentionally lost to keep up his disguise, resulting in many goods being taken out of Zhang Clan's wagons. Even so, Fang Yuan's performance was enough to make others see him in a whole new light. He received a warm welcome back at the caravan. Lady Zhang, I have finished my mission. He cupped his hands to Shang. Xinxi. Shang Xinxi's beautiful eyes shone as she sized up Fang Yuan again, and said with a gentle voice, my mother said to never judge people by their appearances, and hey too, you have given me a live example. I am really thankful to you, this is 150 primeval stones as my thanks. To you, 150 primeval stones. The servant girl Xiao Dai was startled, miss, what are you doing giving him so much? Fang Yuan backed a step and righteously declined, lady, I did it to repay your kindness and not for these primeval stones. Please take them back, I can't take this reward. Xiao Dai immediately agreed, miss, look he doesn't want it, it is better if you put it away. Shang Xin Si, however, insisted, this isn't a reward, but a gift of thanks. My thanks to you. Fang Yuan showed a righteous expression and said with a solemn tone, let Alone this 150 primeval stones, even if it was 1000 primeval stones, I don't want them. Lady Zhang, I may only be a mortal, but please don't humiliate me. This, Shang Xin Si was helpless against such remark and could only put the primeval stones back. HMPH, you know how to be tactful. Xiao Dai quirked her mouth. Zhang Zhu remained silent, his gaze turning more complicated. The favor of repaying life is hard to repay. Please let me use my strength. For you. Fang Yuan cupped his hands. There were numerous monkey groups in Bandit Monkey Mountain and every so often along the trade route, there would be some monkey groups who would occupy the area and set a checkpoint. Fang Yuan repeatedly went to compete with them, and under his deliberate performance, he lost some and won some. Caravans moved and stopped continuously, spending over 20 days in Bandit Monkey Mountain before they got out of this tall mountain. The goods in the caravans had decreased by almost half by now. The mood couldn't help being low. Zhang Clan was the only one that was happy. Because of Fang Yuan's strength, their losses were far less than their previous estimations. Fang Yuan became famous and a many clans sent their servants to visit him. They all wanted to recruit Fang Yuan and gave attractive terms, but Fang Yuan refused all of them and stayed with Zhang Clan. You have some conscience, kid. You didn't waste Missy's kindness. Xiao Dai's attitude towards Fang Yuan had changed. This servant girl said whatever she thought and wasn't shrewd, but whatever her attitude is, it was never in Fang Yuan's considerations. Fang Yuan only cared about Shang Xinxi and her guard Zhang Zhu. Shang Xinxi was gentle and kind, but also very smart. The GU master, Zhang Zhu was very experienced and prudent. Fang Yuan even felt that Zhang Zhu was already beginning to suspect him. In private, Bai Ningbing also reminded Fang Yuan, refusing that hundred and fifty primeval stones was a mistake. With your current identity, how could your heart not be moved by such a huge sum? For cautiousness, we should stop cultivation for some time to guard against Zhang Zhu's secret investigation. However, Fang Yuan refused this suggestion and still cultivated non-stop. Every night, Bai Ningbing also cooperated. She held an indifferent attitude towards her identity being exposed. In fact, she was more willing to see Fang Yuan's defeat. 
Snow Silver Primeval Essence gave an enormous help to Fang Yuan, his cultivation speed was rising as if it had grown wings. On the night they had officially left Fei Hu Mountains region, Fang Yuan advanced from rank 2 initial stage to middle stage. By the time, the travel-worn caravan arrived at the base of Huang Jin Mountain, Fang Yuan was finished with the crocodile strength GU, his strength permanently increasing by the strength of a crocodile. Huang Jin Mountain possessed a lot of gold mines. Its soil contained abundant gold, and one could even obtain dozens of granules of gold if they scooped the water from the mountain streams and filtered the sediments. In day, when the sun shone upon the Huang Jin Mountain, the mountain would often reflect a layer of hazy golden light. The scene of the mountain surrounded by the light was a glorious beauty. If this Huang Jin Mountain was to be on earth, there would definitely be bloody fights and wars for it. However, in this world, the currency used was the primeval stone, and gold was reduced to just a type of metal mineral. Its greatest use was as a material for refining GU. There were two clans located in Huang Jin Mountain. In the southern side of the mountain was Huang Village, and in the northern side was Jin Village. A mountain can't hold two tigers. One could infer from Qing Mao Mountain that the relation between Huang and Jin clan was not harmonious. The caravan's arrival would naturally be welcomed by both the clans. However, the notice from the two clans arrived, the caravan could only choose one clan. If they chose Huang clan, they couldn't go to Jin clan and the same went for opposite. There were many people in caravan with many things to do, thus there was always a large flow of traffic. There were notorious records of the two clans attacking each other with the help of caravans, thus they laid down strict orders. The heads of the caravans had different opinions about choosing which clans to go. They had their own needs and considerations, and so after discussing with each other, this coagglomeration of caravans divided into two, the two groups would go separately to the two clans. Of course, they couldn't enter the village, most of the troops could only station around the village. After this was settled, Zhang Zhu privately looked for Shang Xin Si, I have secretly investigated for many days, He Tu and Bai Yun are very suspicious, I suggest we evict them from our group. Chapter 242, Common Understanding Between Smart People Chapter 242, Common Understanding Between Smart People Translator, Chibi General Editor, Chibi General Suspicious Shang Xin Si's gaze flickered under her thick eyelashes. Zhang Zhu nodded and said solemnly, In fact, I had my doubts about them. Ever since we entered Feihu Mountain. Miss, you gave them a hundred and fifty primeval stones, but they weren't moved at all by such a huge sum. This really makes one ponder. He paused for a moment and continued, I have been secretly investigating them these days, and found even more suspicious points. First of all, they have little to no communication with the servants around them, as if they were wishing to be invisible. Second, they refused the recruitment offers of many clans, even though the terms were excellent. Miss, do you still remember his appearance when he came to ask help? From us that night, hey too, that guy has such powerful strength, how could he be wounded by others into such state? And finally, from my observation, his companion is wearing male clothing, but is actually a woman. The camp was filled with silence. After a long while, Sheng Xin Si smiled, powerful strength doesn't mean. He can definitely win against others, right? Two fists can't rival four palms, He Tu getting wounded was normal. Actually, I know about all these. Suspicious point you spoke of. Zhang Zhu wasn't surprised at all, he understood Shang Xin Si and knew of. Her intelligence. Miss. Shang Xin Si blinked, her face containing a gentle and charming smile. Uncle Zhang Zhu, you have felt stifled for so many days, right? Seeing that I didn't take actions to deal with this, you came to remind me today. Zhang Zhu smiled, I can't conceal anything from you. But why are you still keeping them by your side? Because I felt no ill intent from them. Shang Xin Si's eyes shone with a Wise light, we became suspicious of them at the Feihu Mountain, and if they hadn't stood up at that time, we wouldn't have been able to feel any 
suspicion. But, why did they still take a risk? Wasn't it to help me? This, if they had harbored treacherous schemes, they would definitely stay hidden and watch the show from the side, right? Or maybe receive that one hundred and fifty primeval stones. But they didn't. When Hei Tu said he was repaying my kindness, his expression was sincere and I could tell that. He was speaking the truth. He really wanted to repay this favor. Shang Xin, C said. Zhang Zhu was tongue-tied for a long while, but they aren't simple, they definitely have secrets. A smile blossomed in Shang Xin C's face like a flower, everyone has secrets, I also have them, does having secrets make one a bad person? This world is bright, as someone who knows how to repay kindness, there has to be a limit to how bad he can be right. That might be so but I can't help but wonder what their motives are. Maybe they are plotting something, wait, I know, they must be accomplices of some bandits. They joined the caravan and are planning to rob it by cooperating with demonic path figures. That doesn't make sense. Shang Xinxi shook her head, if they were accomplices, they should have even more reason to stay hidden, why would they expose themselves in Feihu Mountain? So many people tried to recruit them, they could just join other groups and it wouldn't be any less easier to hide themselves. Why did they decide to stick with us? I feel they have definitely been through some suffering. We helped them and they are repaying us. Now, they want to hide their identities, I think we should help them. Zhang Zhu sighed while shaking his head, Miss, why are you always thinking about others? One must know to guard against others. Uncle Zhang Zhu, Shang Xinxi said, if we are really robbed, please don't go fight to protect the goods. If the goods are gone, then they are gone, it is not a big problem. My mother's final wish was for me to bring a token to someone in Shang clan city. However, she also said if that person didn't accept us, we should continue living through these goods. My mother passed away swiftly, she didn't manage to convey who is the person I am supposed to look for. But I think wealth are just worldly possessions. Mother has already left me, you and Xiao Dai are my only remaining relatives. I don't want to see you guys meeting any mishaps. Miss, never say that. Zhang Ju's eyes were red with emotions. Come, take a look, honest and real Shenjia silk. All kinds of fine liquors, I welcome everyone to taste them. Golden Chi Ju, selling for just 50 primeval stones. The temporary market was a hubbub of conversations and hawkers selling out their wares as people moved to and fro. Whenever a caravan by, it would be like a festive moment for the clans. In the temporary market, not only the caravan was selling their wares, some Jin clansmen were also selling their goods. The goods they were selling were mainly golden statues or tools, there were pots, cups, ladles and basins. Their profound sculpting skills were shown in the lifelike statues of animals and people. And with red, green, yellow and Blue gems are pearls as compliments, the statues looked even more exquisite. Huang Jin Mountain was a place blessed by heavens with gold found everywhere in it. The people living here, even the poor slaves were wearing some accessories, like golden rings and golden necklaces. Hairpins, earrings and bracelets worn by many girls were shining with golden luster, looking very beautiful. They were chatting with each other in groups in beautiful voices which was fresh and innocent. As for the GU masters of the Jin clan, their uniforms were similar to Qing. Mao mountains, short sleeves, long pants, belts, leg wrappings and green bamboo shoes. It was just that some were using golden rope as leg wrappings. Belts, cloth, cuffs or pants, were all rimmed in gold. This was Huang Jin mountains. Characteristic. The clans of the southern border had basically the same attires. The demonic GU masters, however, wore all sorts of bizarre dresses. Fang Yuan and Bai Ning Bing were moving through the crowd. They had already bought some cow and goat milk from three to four Jin clansmen. Fang Yuan had tried his best to feed all the Bone Spear GU. But even so, two-third of the Bone Spear GU were already dead from starvation. Aren't you afraid your such big reckless purchasing will expose our identities? Bai Ning Bing expressed his doubt. 
As long as one uses disguise, they will definitely be exposed one day. I don't have a thing to worry about, but you, you have too big of a flaw. Fang Yuan glanced at Bai Ningbing and said. Bai Ningbing snorted coldly, she knew what her flaw was, her gender. Even the old lady at the hamlet could see it. Women and men have physiological differences, this could be disguised, but that required a special GU worm which Bai Ningbing didn't have. Thus, even if she was wearing loose clothes, covering her face with a straw hat, smearing her body with ash and binding her chest, her gender would know. Doubt be revealed as time passed by. Fang Yuan continued. So, rather than cover the truth, it would be better to reveal some things on our own initiative and let the others set their minds at rest, thinking they have seen through us and have the situation in their control. Exposing oneself was not always a bad thing. One could only receive trust. When they revealed their identities, Fang Yuan couldn't reveal his cards by himself, doing so would be too unnatural and not be in harmony with their previous behavior. Only when the other side discovered and probed, could Fang Yuan take the opportunity to conveniently reveal some stuff. Bai Ning Bing understood, so you were intentionally waiting for them to discover before responding. You have finally become smart. HMPH. However, three days passed by and the response and probing Fang Yuan expected had still not arrived. Bai Ningbing finally got the opportunity to take a dig at Fang Yuan, so you also have times when you are wrong. Fang Yuan snorted while pondering inwardly, I could see from Zhang Ju's expression and manners that he was already suspicious of us. He didn't go into it deeply and restrained himself, most likely because there could be danger at any time on the road. But now that the caravan has arrived at Jin clan, the situation is very safe and he should have already begun his probing. Unless, Shang Xinxi's figure appeared in Fang Yuan's mind. Truly smart and also bold. She's mostly likely the one that stopped Zhang. Zhu, it's a little problematic, seems like being too smart can also be a problem. Fang Yuan heaved a sigh. Shang Xinxi's gentleness and kindness had made a deep impact on him, making him slightly underestimate this girl's intelligence. Shang Xinxi wanted to reach an understanding between smart people with Fang Yuan, she was clearly trying to play dumb. However, Fang Yuan had a different motive and this layer of understanding had instead turned into an obstacle. Since it is so, I will just take the initiative. Fang Yuan sighed and went to Find Shang Xinxi. You want to form a partnership with me. Inside a tent, Shang Xinxi and Zhang Zhu were wearing surprised expressions when Fang Yuan revealed his intentions. They hadn't gone to look for these two, but these two instead came knocking on their door. This was slightly beyond the young girl's expectations. Zhang Zhu's mind shook. You finally showed your true colors. Partnership, HMPH. Lady Zhang, I am a bit ashamed to say it, but we need primeval stones and I regard myself to be somewhat knowledgeable about merchants. I want to borrow a batch of goods, and we will divide the profits we earn in half, how about it? Fang Yuan slightly bowed his body, appearing neither servile nor overbearing. You don't have any primeval stones and are as poor as a mouse, yet you want to borrow the chicken that lays egg. You are overconfident. Zhang. Ju's gaze carried a cold light, why do you think you will definitely earn profits? And on what basis do you think our Zhang clan will lend the goods to you? There will naturally be profits and losses in business. I also can't guarantee the profits. As to your second question, I think Lady Zhang is a good person and should lend the goods to me, right? You wanted to ask of my reason, I can only answer you that it is this feeling. If this feeling is wrong, then, please consider this matter never happened. Fang Yuan answered with a smile. He was one year less and his whole body was covered with burns, making him appear terrifying when he smiled. However, Sheng Xinxi looked at him and saw in him a kind of confidence, decisiveness and a radiance of careful planning. This radiance emitted a different type of charisma, penetrating through the ugly appearance. Interesting, it seems he also sensed our suspicions, so he wanted to reach a tacit understanding with me. 
Shang Shinsi's gaze continued to flash. After a short while, she laughed. This kind of, frank, communication style made her feel an indescribable safety and also a feeling of freshness. If you hadn't been there, there wouldn't even be a quarter of goods. Remaining, they would have already been snatched by those monkeys in Fei. Who Mountain, since you have this notion, I will hand over these goods to you, she said. If the servant girl Xiao Dai were here, she might have started making a big fuss. Fang Yuan showed an expression of being in a daze for a while, before he bowed to show his thanks. Miss, this, when Fang Yuan left the tent, Zhang Zhu couldn't endure it. Anymore, Shang Xinxi blinked mischievously like a child, isn't this interesting? Did you hear what he said just now, he hadn't even started on the business. But was already talking of sharing the profits in half. His tone was as if the profits were certain. HMPH, he is but a boor, how much talent could he have? Zhang Zhu disdainfully scoffed, if we talk about business talent, who could compare? To miss. I still remember how you have managed the properties all these years and expanded them, if it were not for the envy of those petty people. In Zhang clan. All right, what is the use of talking about the past? Since Uncle Zhang Zhu believes in my talent, then you should trust me. Even if Hei Tu squanders these goods, I could still rebuild the business from scratch, isn't that right? Shang Xinxi said. Of course, Zhang Zhu said without hesitation. Chapter 243, Benefits Sent Towards Oneself Chapter 243, Benefits Sent Towards Oneself Translator, Chibi General Editor, Chibi General There are so much goods, it won't be cheap. It'll require at least 50 thousand primeval stones. Jin Clan's GU master looked at Fang Yuan in suspicion. After getting approval from Shang Xinxi, Fang Yuan immediately found a few Jin Clan GU masters, this was already the sixth. I do not have primeval stones. Fang Yuan shook his head, but I can use my goods to exchange for yours. Exchange. The GU master's eyebrows rose. He was not surprised as it was common to barter, especially in the caravan. To him, there was no loss in bartering as long as the value was about the same. What will you use to exchange? Fang Yuan brought him to the goods immediately. Jin Clan's GU master frowned, your goods are cheaper than mine. But you can get a good price for it on this Huang Jin mountain, am I? Wrong. Fang Yuan laughed. Jin Clan GU master frowned even deeper, if the price is set too high, we won't be able to sell it. Then sell it slowly, it'll be sold eventually. Goods are more expensive. When they are rare, by then you will be sitting at home collecting your earnings. Fang Yuan smiled. The GU master laughed, the reason he talked so much was only to lower the price, his heart was moved long ago. You were not bad at all. As a mortal, you were neither haughty nor humble. I have three stores, are you interested in working for me? I can give you the position of shopkeeper. Your wages can also be further discussed. The GU master patted Fang Yuan's shoulders. Fang Yuan rejected politely. The GU master felt a little pity. Hey Tu, what have you done? After the transaction was over, Xiao Dai ran over with a frosty expression. You exchanged all the goods. What are you trying to do? You were too bold. Xiao Dai stomped her foot in anger. Do you know these goods were? All chosen by Missy after much consideration. After we transport them to Shang Clan City, we can sell them for twice the amount. Quick, exchange them back now. Fang Yuan's expression turned cold. Your Missy has already lent all the goods to me, which is to say, these belong to me. HMPH, I am dealing with my own goods, is there a problem? Fang Yuan's gaze swept through Xiao Dai, a cold light flashed in his eyes. Xiao Dai instantly felt a chill that made her heart palpitate. Fang Yuan had decided to expose a little more and thus putting on such a strong attitude against Xiao Dai. Xiao Dai was witty and eloquent all along, but now, a cold feeling crept up. Her heart, you, you, I will tell Missy, watch out. She tried her best to hide her inner emotions, but still left frantically. Her report naturally caused no disturbance to Fang Yuan. But the servants that Shang Xinxi brought along, had much opinions about 
Fang Yuan's actions, many discussed secretly, thinking this Hei Tu had gone crazy. Fang Yuan knew the value of these goods and could sense Shang Xin Si's business talent. But this was her first time doing business, her experience was very lacking. Even though she had talent, business was not just transporting goods to the destination and earning profits from the price difference. A true expert merchant earned along the way as well, using their keen foresight to explore new opportunities, learning about the specialty of each mountains, and tailoring to the needs of each clan, they built networks as they profited from all those around them. Of course, these requirements were too high for the current Shang Xin Si. She had just turned 16, although she had talent, she was still a fresh young girl. Fang Yuan spent about a hundred years in his past life doing trade. He joined caravans and even became a leader he also opened his own shops, including rock gambling and even auctions. When it came to experience and foresight, those leaders and vice leaders in the caravan could not hold a candle to Fang Yuan, let alone the inexperienced Shang Xin Si. There is still a distance to Shang Liang Mountain. If I manipulate this wholeheartedly, I can at least increase the value of these goods by seven or eight times. This profit margin was terrifying. Any higher and even Fang Yuan could do it. Due to actual circumstances, seven to eight times was the limit of this world. Of course, if I use unorthodox methods, not just 7 or 8, I can easily jack it up by 70 or 80 times. Thinking so, Fang Yuan could not help but think of a poem on earth. Obeying the law and living in constant worry, bandits live in pleasure every night. Those who harm others to benefit themselves ride horses, while those were righteous and fair starve in hunger. Those who build bridges and Repair roads go blind, while those who murder and cause arson have many offsprings. When I died, I asked Buddha, Buddha said, there was nothing I could do. Ha ha, the so-called system and law was to deprive the masses and limit the weak. Whichever world it was, the law of the jungle prevailed. Thus, even during an era ruled by law, countless rich and influential people found loopholes and avoided the judgment of the law. Not to mention this. GU world, where strength was everything one needed to exert influence. In Fang Yuan's previous life, he once did business with all his heart, having millions of assets and countless properties. But later, some experts casually usurped them, causing him to go bankrupt and living in the streets. For the next 400 years of his life, whenever he thought back to it, he was extremely glad he had such an experience. Only through pain can one learn about the truth. Precisely because of this experience, he woke up from his delusions and broke free of the restraints that bound him while living in the lawful society of Earth. Humans were often blinded not by the sight before them, but by the chains in their hearts. To Fang Yuan, if he abided by morals of business and be a proper businessman, he could only earn seven to eight times the profit. But if he used some illegal methods, becoming an unscrupulous merchant, he could make over tenfold worth of profits. If he abandoned his position, and lied and scammed, becoming a dishonest trader, he could make tens of times of profits. If he directly murdered and robbed, he would not even need a capital. Business without investing capital, was always the most profitable. But Fang Yuan had other objectives doing business now. Thus, methods that broke the rules could not be used and this caused him to have some feeling of restraint. However, the night before the caravan set off, a Jin clan GU master secretly approached him. There is a secret deal we want to make, are you interested? This GU master was one of those who traded with Fang Yuan earlier. Fang Yuan did not mind it, but after a few minutes, he changed his ideas. You were saying, someone wants to sell gins and grass. He was extremely surprised, almost suspecting that he had heard wrongly. To Jin clan, Jin's and grass could not be replaced with other materials, it was an important war resource. It was exactly because it could be used as a refinement material that Jin clan could produce large numbers of golden silkworm GU. But now someone wanted to sell it. In Fang Yuan's memories, it was because Jin clan had large numbers of the 
Rank 3 Golden Silkworm Ji that their battle strength rose rapidly, thus eliminating Huang Clan and becoming the controller of the area. Wait a minute, Huang Clan still exists now. This means Jin Clan has not fully manufactured the recipe for the Golden Silkworm Ji That shouldn't be it, by this time they should have some ideas already, otherwise why would they mass plant Jin's and grass? Fang Yuan's thoughts moved like lightning. He probed. I'm about done with trading goods. The ginseng grass is an unpopular material, although it is rare, little people need it. Seeing Fang Yuan reject, the GU master panicked, the price can be further. Disgust, why don't we have a good talk about it? Fang Yuan's gaze shone, seeing the other party was very anxious, he started to lower the price. After an intense bargaining, the ginseng grass price had been lowered to a horrifying degree. The GU master's face paled, his expression turned ugly and his tone became irritated. You win, we'll go with this price, can we complete the deal? Now, this price was very low, even lower than the cost of nurturing the Jinzen. Grass. If they sold it, it truly was making a loss. The Jin clan GU master knew this, and so his heart bled. Fang Yuan also knew this was the limit, but he still shook his head, this. Price is too low, to speak the truth your attitude makes me feel uncertain. The Jin Clan GU Master instantly exploded, you were the one who lowered. The price, now you're finding it too low. Fang Yuan shrugged, you said it earlier, this is a private transaction, there. Is no hard evidence. What if you sell me fake goods, who would I find? Then, you see, the caravan is leaving tomorrow, by then even if I made a loss, I have no choice but to leave. Your suspicions are valid, Jin Clan GU Master's anger subsided, don't worry about the goods, they are definitely real. To tell you the truth, this is secretly sold by our young master. Fang Yuan's eyes shone brilliantly, he had finally received some useful information. He pretended to be shocked, your young master stole it. These Jin's and grass is a vegetation loved by the clan leader, purposely growing three acres of it. But we can't do anything about it since our clan leader has a unique interest. So do not worry, the Jinzen grass is nothing important, the son taking his father's things to sell, even if it is discovered. He will only be scolded. The GU master said. Fang Yuan immediately understood everything. So it was like this. Jin clan had already been trying to fix the recipe for the golden silkworm. GU. At this point, they had a rough idea already and were thus growing. Three acres of ginseng grass. But to prevent unwanted attention from Huang clan, this information was kept among the higher-ups of the clan, even the young master did not know. Only thinking that this grass was planted out of interest. The ginseng grass growth period was very long, needing four years to mature. In his memory, Jin clan launched their attack a year later. They used the rank 3 golden silkworm GU which had sharp offensive strength to eliminate Huang clan and dominate Huang Jin mountain. If this 3 acres of Jinzen grass was gone, they won't be able to find that much on the market either. Then to eliminate Huang clan, Jin clan would need to waste a few more years. Evidently, this Jinzen grass was a dangerous item. If he really bought it, it would be provoking this large Jin clan. An ordinary person would avoid it like the plague, but Fang Yuan saw a huge opportunity from it. This profit, although dangerous, since it was delivered to him with both hands, how could he reject it? To speak the truth, although Fang Yuan possessed the heavenly essence, treasure lotus, he still had a need for primeval stones, and it wasn't a small amount he needed. When they reached the Shang clan city, he needed to purchase GU worms. And that required a lot of primeval stones. Relying on the heavenly essence. Treasure Lotus's daily production was troublesome and insufficient. That young master is definitely a wastrel, he is probably doted by the clan. Leader, but is in need of money recently, thus he set his eyes on the Jinzen. Grass. He he he. Thinking so, Fang Yuan couldn't help but laugh. If he took this profit, not only would it help in purchasing GU worms, it would also leave a deep impression on Shang Xin Si. It was simply killing two birds with one stone. 
Jin Clan Ji Yu Master saw Fang Yuan smile and laughed. So, you agree? Of course. Fang Yuan looked at him. Once this deal went through, this guy would definitely be in trouble. But what does his trouble have to do with me? What Fang Yuan was considering now was how to swallow this prophet without choking himself. Chapter 244 Almost Blackmail. Chapter 244 Almost Blackmail. Translator Chibi General Editor Chibi General. Dawn was breaking in the east, revealing the first rays of light. The cold air of the night had condensed into dewdrops on the grass and leaves. The temporary market in the Jin clan was currently being dismantled, the tents were packed up, the carpets on the street stalls were rolled up and the goods were packed in bags. After having stayed in the Jin village for many days, the caravan was preparing to set off. As for the merchants, no matter how many goods they sold or bought, they would be making profits eventually. Thus, though they were exhausted, they were wearing cheerful smiles on their faces. Xiao Dai's expression, however, was horrible. Missy, I just checked, that Hei Tu has exchanged almost all the goods. And, in the goods he exchanged for, I saw three carts filled with ginseng grass. Ginseng grass. Shang Xinxi's long brows slightly furrowed. Xiao Dai was extremely angry, as she pulled Shang Xinxi by her hand. Even a layman like me knows how worthless Jinzen grass is, but he has exchanged for so many of them. Missy, this Hei Tu is simply making a trouble. Xiao Dai, calm down first. Shang Xinxi patted Xiao Dai's hand, he should have exchanged for this Jinzen grass yesterday night, I don't know why he did that but he must have a reason for exchanging other goods. Just think, it is already pretty good that he could accomplish this as a mortal. Missy, why are you standing up for him? I am only thinking for you. These goods were originally ours, why would you let others squander it for? Nothing. Most importantly, he can't compensate us at all. Lord Zhang Zhu, please persuade Missy, Xiao Dai pouted. Zhang Zhu who was looking on from the side, sighed, Miss, Xiao Dai is. Right. We lent the goods to him to test him, but now that we can already see. The results, why are we still letting him squander them? We believe in your ability miss, but if we can decrease our losses, why are we not doing so? It will also decrease our struggles when we reach Shang Clan City. This, Shang Xin Si mumbled. She was young, her eyes started showing signs of hesitation. Previously, she had felt the goods exchanged by Fang Yuan was all right. However, this Jinzen grass, it was a great loss to exchange for so much. Jinzen grass. Jinzen grass was easy to preserve, but it simply couldn't be sold as the demand for it was almost non-existent. Such a large stockpile would rot sooner or later, and finally, they would have no choice but to cut down the price and dump sell the stock, it was destined to make a loss. Excuse me, are you Lady Zhang Xinxi? Just then, a middle-aged G.U. Master who was sweating profusely, anxiously ran towards Shang Xinxi. The iron plate on his belt was carved with number, two, showing the rank of this GU master. Shang Xinxi gave a slight smile, yes I am, may I inquire who you are? The middle-aged man cupped his fists, I am the personal guard of Lord Clan. Leader, here on his command to ask for a favor. Oh, please speak. Lady Zhang should have bought a large batch of ginseng grass yesterday. Night. The whole story is like this, our clan leader is very passionate for gins and grass and so he personally raised some for pleasure. But the young master secretly dug them out and sold them behind the clan leader's back. Now, clan leader has placed the young master in confinement, and also wishes to buy back the gins and grass. I sincerely request you to sell them back to us. This GU master was polite, but that politeness carried his firm attitude. Miss, Zhang Ju's expression turned solemn as he reminded Shang Xin. See, this personal guard represented the clan leader of the Jin clan, this matter. Could be both big or small, and it could turn serious if it was handled. Improperly, Shang Xin Si glanced at Zhang Zhu and nodded her head to indicate she. Understood. Actually, I am also someone who loves flowers and I can. Understand honorable clan leader's passion. We will hand over the Jinzen. 
Grass to your honorable clan with not even a stem missing. It makes one happy to see such a reasonable lady. The personal guard Ji Yu. Master's expression relaxed and revealed a slight smile. Shang Shin Si continued. A subordinate of mine was in charge of this. Transaction. I will call him over. Fang Yuan had already been paying attention to the activity here. Hey Tu, you are in trouble. Missy has called you. Xiao Dai had come to summon him. Fang Yuan soon appeared in front of the personal guard and cupped his fists. I am the one who was responsible for the transaction of gins and grass. I heard the honorable clan leader wants to buy them back. The personal guard was surprised to see the newcomer was actually a mortal. His face immediately revealed a slight disdain and arrogance. He snorted. That's right. Mortal, you can relax. Lord clan leader is benevolent and is willing to use 3,000 primeval stones to buy back the three carts of gins and grass on you. So much. Xiao Dai was speechless and her gaze revealed her joy. Zhang Zhu frowned before gradually relaxing. 3,000 primeval stones should be the maximum market price for the gins and grass and this showed Jin clan leader's sincerity. However, Fang Yuan shook his head. Jins and grass is very precious, only 3,000 primeval stones to buy them back, this doesn't seem to be sincere, right? The personal guard immediately frowned, what? The price I am giving is much higher than the maximum market price of the jins and grass. Mortal, what price did you buy it for? Fang Yuan rubbed his nose, let's not discuss about the purchase price, we are all businessmen, naturally we will buy low and sell high. 3. Thousand primeval stones are too less, I am not selling. You, the personal guard clenched his teeth, before eventually showing. Five fingers, all right, then I will rise it by two thousand, five thousand. Primeval stones. Xiao Dai's eyes widened in shock, her face started to flush with excitement. As she looked at the five stretched fingers of the personal guard. Five thousand primeval stones. This is what you said, you can't go back. On it. She was almost jumping in excitement, she hadn't thought the situation would develop like this, Fang Yuan had profited huge. However, Fang Yuan still shook his head. The personal guard's expression turned cold as he threatened, mortal. Don't you think you are being greedy? These gins and grass were originally our clan's goods. You privately exchanged for them which is already not permitted. You don't even have any evidence of transaction, I can even say. You secretly stole them. Zhang Zhu was taken aback by the personal guard's anger. He looked at Fang Yuan. Just sell it. Fang Yuan laughed. You sold them. I bought. This was mutual consent. What more? It was your young master who sold them to me. I can't do anything if you are determined to say I stole them. Jin clan is so rich and powerful that it can bully the weak and rob our goods. HMPH. The goods are just there, why don't you go take them? It is just that as far as I know, it is. Not just me who bought the gins and grass. Many others have a share of it, is. Jin clan going to snatch all of theirs too. Fang Yuan had already expected this situation, thus he only bought a large. Majority yesterday night. The remaining Jin Jin grass were sold to others by. That G U master. You. The personal guard was furious, but he could only clench his teeth. At Fang Yuan's blatant extortion. He pointed at Fang Yuan, your clan bought the most, you little brat, you. Want to make it hard for me? Of course not, I am only trying to make a transaction. Fang Yuan cupped. His hands. HMPH, forget it. I will put 2,000 more, 7,000 primeval. Stones. Mortal, bring all the gins and grass you bought. The personal guard. Shouted. Hey too, just sell it. We need to pay attention to amiability while doing business. Shang Shin Si couldn't endure this pressure. Since Miss has spoken, Fang Yuan nodded his head before immediately. Changing the subject, then I will take back a step. 8,000. Primeval stones and all the gins and grass I have is yours. The moment these words came out, Shang Shin Si and the rest all became dazed. The personal guard came back to his senses, unable to contain his anger. What? You bastard. Fang Yuan, however, had a smile on his face. Business is business, please. Don't get angry Lord Ji Yu Master. 
Actually, I was thinking of selling them for 10,000 primeval stones, if Lord G.U. Master can't decide it, how about letting me discuss with your honorable clan's clan leader? No need. The personal guard swung his arm as he looked at Fang Yuan. With extreme disgust, you, a mortal, what qualifications do you have to meet Lord Clan Leader? Bring the goods quickly, taking advantage of others. When they are down, I will remember you. HMPH. His words, no doubt, meant he acceded to Fang Yuan's raised price. The two finished the transaction in moments. Fang Yuan hadn't even used 500 primeval stones to buy them, but in just one night, the Jinzen grass changed hands for 8,000 primeval stones. Miss, there are two trunks filled to the brim with primeval stones. Xiao. Dai was beaming with joy. She had witnessed the whole transaction process in fear, but now that she looked at these primeval stones, she felt that it was all worth it. Even her gaze towards Fang Yuan changed. Did you already know? That can't be it, this should just be the case of a blind cat coming across a dead mouse. She looked at Fang Yuan from top to bottom and remarked, offending the Jin clan for just 8,000 primeval stones is not worth it. Zhang Zhu had been frowning from the start, he looked at Fang Yuan with some discontent and warned, never take such a risk again. Fang Yuan only smiled and turned towards Shang Xin Si, according to our previous contract, Miss will get half of this 8,000 primeval stones, and I request Miss to safeguard my half of the share too. Ellipsis. Has it been settled? Jin clan leader stood on a hill, watching the leaving caravan. An elder was standing to his side and reported, Yes, clan leader. We have bought back all the Jinzen grass. It is just that Zhang clan is truly hateful for taking advantage of the situation to extort us. Jin clan's clan leader's brows furrowed, oh, speak. The elder elaborated on the details. Jin clan's clan leader smiled, it is just 8,000 primeval stones, no. Need to care. That Zhang clan's lady, however, is intelligent, she pushed. Out a mortal servant to sound out the situation and earned herself this. Money. Lord clan leader, what if this Zhang clan already knows our clan's secret? and thus took advantage to extort us. Ha ha ha, don't be overly suspicious. If they knew the importance of the Jinzen grass to my clan, why would they only extort mere 8,000 primeval stones? They would buy them all or even not agree to sell them. But just in case, send some GU masters to watch them till they completely leave Huang Jin Mountains region. Make sure to watch if there are anyone who tries to secretly go to Huang clan. If there are, kill them on the spot. The clan leader's killing intent overflowed all around him as he said this. The elder's mind trembled. As you command, Lord Clan Leader. Fang Yuan glanced back at the Huang Jin Mountain, his lips curled up in a smiled. Not far away in a carriage, Sheng Xinxi lifted open the curtains and gazed at Fang Yuan's back. Her beautiful eyes flashed with light, having fallen into deep thought. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Reverend Insanity. Written by Gu Zhen Ran. Audio by Dex San Wu Li.